Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willy here. As expected, Battlegrounds are coming ahead of Phase 3. Way ahead in fact. Just the other day we received confirmation they'll be coming out on December 10th. I predicted we'd just get Warsong Gulch, but in fact we're getting Warsong Gulch and Alteric Valley at the same time. Pretty cool. With the rest of Phase 3 currently planned for early 2020 as marked in a blue post, I think we can expect around a month between Battlegrounds and actual Phase 3. And if you look back, there will have been about one month between the PvP Honor System releasing and Battlegrounds themselves. So let's talk Battlegrounds. There's more content to do than just the objectives that win the game, along with some PvP thrown in there. Reputation, rewards, mini quests, mounts, there's plenty to do. I'm going to cover a Rafi Basin here too for future reference and for a more complete video. First of all, you can queue up from Battle Masters in your major city. These guys are usually in the military type area of your city where the warrior trainers are. You can also check in with the guards to get directions there. There are also Battleground Weekend events added in patch 1.7, starting Thursday at midnight and continuing on to Tuesday morning. These events would simply increase your honor gains as well as your reputation gains in a certain battleground whilst the event is active. And this event would occur most weekends on a rotation. A bit unfortunate that we're getting the release on the same day that the event ends. Hopefully the first weekend lands on a holiday. Getting an Alteric Valley weekend straight away would be great, and you can tell which battleground is currently available for extra rewards, as there'll be an emissary in major cities from the faction associated with that battleground. So onto the battlegrounds themselves now, starting in Warsaw and Gulch, this is located in southern Ashenvale, the battle rages between the Silverwing Sentinels for the Alliance, who have their outpost in southern Ashenvale, and the Warsong Outriders for the Horde, who have their outpost in the northern Barrens and this is where the reputation vendors are located as well. So Warsong Gulch is a 10v10 where I'm pretty sure the objective is to get to the middle of the map and then just fight there as much as possible. I think there's something to do with a flag as well, but unlike retail, there's no timer. The first of three caps wins the game, and if both sides are holding out in a well-fortified position, this could go on for some time. There are a number of temporary buffs scattered across the battleground, increasing speed, healing you to full, or improving your damage output whilst taking extra damage yourself. Warsong Gulch, like all battlegrounds, has a reputation system and some solid rewards. However, methods of getting reputation aren't exactly the easiest. Each flag capture gives you 35 reputation or 45 during a bonus event, so an overall win will grant up to 135 reputation as well as marks of honor, three for a win and one for a loss. Three of these can be turned in at a battleground location for 50 reputation and this is repeatable. There should also be a different quest for great honour for the Horde and concerted efforts for the Alliance. This needs three marks of honour from all battlegrounds Warsaw Gulch, Alteric Valley and eventually Rathi Basin. This gives 200 Alteric Valley rep and 150 for the other two battlegrounds on first turn in and then 150 for AV and 100 for the other two in subsequent turn-ins. So you might think, nice, I'll save my marks up for this, but the Marks of Honor have a max stack of 20 to stop people saving them up and then turning in loads in one week to push their standing. I found reports people saying the standard 3 token turn-in gives 398 honor, whilst the quest for 3 of each is giving 2388 honor per turn-in, and this is at level 60 by the way, so the rewards are far better, but it may depend on battleground length to the point where it isn't worth it. Also, we need a Rathi Basin to be out, but it may be a good idea to save your marks, leading up to the release of a Rathi Basin so you can cash in on that first week. Moving on, the reputation rewards are largely mirrored across both factions. The gear rewards are tiered for different levels from 18 to 58, and then eventually 60. So whatever bracket you're playing in, there are some good rewards to be earned. Friendly giving some consumables that can be used in that specific battleground. Honored gives some jewelry items and a pretty sweet looking healing cape if you don't fancy forking out the cash for hide of the wild. Revered gives a set of weapons including a staff, bow and a sword as well as a dagger. And finally Exalted gives a pretty fancy looking tabard as well as an epic set of braces and legs. The only difference here between the rewards are a set of legs put in for the horde itemized towards shaman and a plate set designed to be used by paladins on the alliance. Some solid rewards there to be sure, but getting exalted is gonna take a long time in Warsong Gulch since the methods of gaining reputation are pretty stingy. Arathi Basin now, I figured I'd cover it too since it's pretty simple to cover. Located in the Arathi Highlands with faction hubs pretty close to each other, this will be the last battleground to release in Classic in Phase 4. 
Arathi Basin is a 15 versus 15 map where, if I remember correctly, the objective is to find the closest road and start fighting people there, ideally never moving from that spot. There's this resource counter too, I guess? Controlling points across the map gives resources. The more points you control, the more resources you get. First to 2000 wins. These points are the stables, mines, blacksmith, lumber mill, and farm. Once again, in terms of reputation, there's the standard three marks of honor turning, as well as the consolidated three of each mark quest. Reputation is actively gained during the battleground. 200 of each resource earns 10 reputation, and this is improved on holidays to 10 reputation per 150 resources, so up to 130 reputation for a win. Arathi Basin has some associated quests too. The Battle for Arathi Basin, which requires you to cap every base apart from the one in front of your gates, available at neutral and rewarding a solid 500 reputation. At friendly, a new quest should become available, control four bases, which, like it sounds, you need to control four bases. This one gives 800 rep. And finally, at exalted, control five bases, the reward for being this the tabard for your Arathi Basin faction. The reward structure for reputation follows something similar to Warsong Gulch, friendly giving consumables to use inside the battleground. Beyond this, each new reputation tier gives class locked gear, which also has a tier set bonus, though the effects aren't very good to be honest. Honor gives you a belt as well as a trinket that absorbs a small amount of physical damage, a decent alternative to Arena Grandmaster. Revered gives you a set of boots that increase run speed slightly, and from what I could research it's an 8% increase, but it doesn't stack with the minor speed enchants on the boots, which is a shame, but it does allow you to put a more offensive enchantment on your boots instead. Exalted gives an epic set of shoulders to finish off the 3 set, as well as a well-statted cape for physical damage dealers. Finally, there are two caster items, a staff and a dagger, both of which have some decent stats, a bit of crit, and some armor thrown in there as well. And now for the big one, Alteric Valley. First thing to note is we're playing on our version from patch 1.12, which has severely nerfed NPC health and numbers within the battleground, as well as removing Korak the Blood Rager entirely effectively making the only requirement to win to kill the enemy commander, so honestly, Zerg tactics will probably become the meta, and Alteric Valley's lasting days I'm sure you've heard about are most likely gonna remain in the past. Located in the Alteric Mountains, the faction hubs once again are rather close together. Considering this is just bordering the Hillsbrad foothills, PvP around the entrance is likely to be pretty spicy. Unlike Warsung Gulch or Arathi Basin though, Alteric Valley is more like a zone, and there are a lot of quests and additional objectives you can look at doing. 40 versus 40, this place really puts the battle in battleground. Objective wise to win, I'm pretty sure on this one, what you need to do is go to the field of strife right in the middle and just fight other people there. At the far end of each faction starting point, there is an enemy commander, Drek'thar for the Horde and Vandar Stormpike for the Alliance. These guys will need a solid team effort to take down due to their raid boss levels of damage and health. Once they drop, you win, simple as that. Reputation wise, there are many different ways to earn. First of all, there are different activities within the battleground where rep is given straight away. Defeating enemy captains, lords, air masters, or even guards all grant reputation, as does defeating enemy players. Then at the end of the match, additional reputation is given based upon how many towers you've captured, destroyed, areas controlled like graveyards, mines, and so on. There are many ways to get a nice amount of reputation per battleground in Alteric Valley. There are many, many quests to complete in Alteric Valley too, some that come from outside and inside the instance. Ranging from capturing certain objectives, defeating certain enemies, one-time quests like the battle for Alterac, defeating the enemy commander, capture a mine. There's a great introductory quest as well that you should 100% pick up where all you have to do is win a game and it gives some very powerful rewards for how simple it is. This gear will easily last you into raid and this is a follow up from the battle for Alterac quest offering notable items like the Ice Barb Spear, Blood Seeker and Wand of Biting Cold. There are repeatable quests inside the battleground focus Focused around deploying different types of troops after having collected a certain number of supplies throughout the battleground. There are ground assaults, cavalry assaults, aerial assaults, and finally the big one, faction lords. These need a huge number of supplies and these are summoned on the battlefield and can be buffed up and healed just like a player. Get one of these on your side and it should go a long way towards you winning the battle. There's also another quest line that you should absolutely start which is to get an insignia which teleports you back to your faction main camp on a short cooldown. Really useful for handing in other quests on short notice or returning to defend your base. Starting off from the quest proving grounds and then you 
you get an upgrade each time you reach a new reputation threshold, all the way to rank 6 eventually, once you're 999 in Exalted. In terms of rewards, there's some pretty good stuff you can get your hands on. Friendly has the similar consumables just like the other two battlegrounds. Honor gives you a cloak, neck and a belt, as well as a new type of ammo. Not as good as Thorium ammo, but decent alternatives. Revere gives you a battle standard, increasing all party member damage by 10%, only usable inside AV though. There are also some weapon unlocks from this point, a few of which are decent, as well as a new quiver and ammo pouch for hunters, giving a 15% boost to ranged attack speed, which is on par with the epic quiver, which would otherwise cost a decent amount of money or luck, so it's a very solid alternative. Finally, Exalted is where the big reward are at. Some of these items are far more interesting than what is on offer Exalted on other battlegrounds. Offhands that boost up certain spell schools by a pretty huge amount, like shadow healing or frost damage, the iconic immovable object and unstoppable force, two different rings, one for melee, one for casters, and finally a really solid dagger. And let's not forget the mounts either, a wolf for the horde and a ram for alliance. And note that these don't require riding skills, so basically you can get a wolf without being exalted with Orgrimmar, or a ram without getting exalted with Ironforge, if anyone's actually into rounds out there. Alteric Valley is definitely easier reputation than the other two battlegrounds, as there's simply more ways to get hold of rep. I'm expecting a pretty zergy meta to evolve though, especially once many people have done the introductory and main quest there. We'll have to wait and see how it all unfolds once we have our hands on it. And that wraps up the majority of what is available in battlegrounds. I could have gone into a bit more details for Alteric Valley, but I think you get the idea of what kind of activities you can do there, and we can leave a little bit to exploration. I'm still holding out for an Alteric Valley weekend on the first reset. Let me know which battleground you guys are looking forward to most, what you guys think about this, and as always, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe, as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.